Why would one of the world's most powerful airlines go to war with one of its biggest aircraft suppliers, dragging Airbus into courtrooms, tearing paint off brand new jets, and even threatening to cancel orders worth billions? And what does this bitter feud have to do with the future of long-haul travel and Boeing's 777X waiting in the wings? This is the story of Qatar Airways, Airbus, and a fight that became one of aviation's most dramatic rivalries. At its center, the Airbus A350, once hailed as the perfect long-haul jet. But for Qatar Airways, it became a symbol of frustration, strategy, and survival in a market where every decision counts. When Airbus first unveiled the A350, it wasn't just pitching another wide-body jet. It was pitching a revolution in long-haul flying. Here was an aircraft built from the ground up using carbon fiber reinforced plastic, making it lighter, stronger, and far more fuel efficient than the aluminum heavy designs of the past. Its engines, the Rolls-Royce Trent XWB, weren't just powerful, they were some of the most efficient large turbofans ever built. Combined, these innovations promised airlines savings of millions of dollars in fuel costs over the lifetime of the jet. But Airbus didn't stop at efficiency. The A350 was designed to change the passenger experience too. A wider cabin allowed for more comfort even in economy class, while higher ceilings, larger windows, and advanced air filtration systems created a calmer, fresher atmosphere on board. And with a cabin pressurized to a lower altitude and quieter engines, the A350 wasn't just another plane. It was pitched as a healthier, more restful way to fly. This was exactly the kind of aircraft that forward-looking airlines were waiting for. And one airline in particular saw the A350 not simply as a tool, but as a weapon in its quest to dominate global skies, Qatar Airways. The outspoken and ambitious CEO of Qatar Airways became one of the program's fiercest champions. He saw the A350 as the perfect aircraft to match his vision of transforming Qatar Airways into a world-class global powerhouse. Qatar Airways placed massive orders, dozens of A35900s and the stretched 1000 variant, making the airline not just an early adopter, but the largest customer. The A350 became a symbol of Qatar's ambition to outpace rivals like Emirates and Etihad, expanding to every corner of the globe with a jet that could deliver on efficiency, comfort, and prestige. To him, the A350 wasn't simply another aircraft on the roster. It was the backbone of Qatar Airways' future, the machine that would carry the airline's flag across continents and into the hearts of millions of passengers. But then came the cracks, literally. What began as small blemishes on the A350's pristine fuselage soon spiraled into one of the biggest controversies in modern aviation. By 2021, Qatar Airways stunned the industry by announcing it was grounding part of its A350 fleet. The airline claimed the paint was not just peeling, it was deteriorating to the point where the protective layer underneath, known as the expanded copper foil, or ECF, was being exposed. This layer is crucial. It's what shields the carbon fiber fuselage from lightning strikes, something every airliner encounters multiple times throughout its life. For most airlines, these issues might have been dismissed as cosmetic, but Qatar Airways saw it differently. To them, this wasn't just about paint. It was about safety, reputation, and trust. And in the high-stakes world of global aviation, those three things are priceless. Airbus, on the other hand, pushed back. The manufacturer admitted the surface problems were real, but insisted they were only skin deep. The planes, they said, were structurally sound and perfectly safe to fly. Regulators agreed. Flights continued across Europe, Asia, and the Americas with no restrictions. But Qatar wasn't convinced. What followed was a dramatic standoff. Qatar halted all future deliveries of the A350, despite having dozens still on order. And then, in an extraordinary move, the airline dragged Airbus into court, launching a legal battle worth billions of dollars. It wasn't just about aircraft anymore. It was about pride, politics, and the relationship between one of the world's most powerful airlines and one of its biggest manufacturers. So why would Qatar go this far? Why take a dispute over paint to the courtroom and risk a billion-dollar fallout with Airbus? Part of the answer lies in strategy. For Qatar Airways, the A350 wasn't just another aircraft. It was the backbone of its long-haul ambitions. These jets carried the airline's brand into the world's most competitive markets. 
If reliability faltered, or if headlines about safety concerns spread, Qatar's carefully built reputation for excellence could unravel overnight. But beneath the surface was another layer, leverage. By challenging Airbus so aggressively, Qatar Airways created space to maneuver. It could stall deliveries of aircraft it didn't immediately need, push Airbus for concessions, or even hint at shifting its loyalty toward Boeing's upcoming Boeing's 777X, a move that would not only diversify its fleet, but also remind Airbus that their monopoly over Qatar's future was not guaranteed. In other words, the legal battle wasn't just about paint. It was a high-stakes negotiation, a game of aviation chess, where every grounded jet, every delayed delivery, and every headline became a piece on the board. Boeing's 777X was pitched as the crown jewel of the next generation of long-haul travel, the natural heir to the wildly successful 777. With its enormous composite folding wings, brand new GE9X engines, and a wider cabin capable of carrying more passengers than the A350, it promised airlines unmatched efficiency on high-capacity routes. On paper, it was everything an airline like Qatar could want. Range for ultra-long-haul missions, the economics of a twin jet, and prestige as the world's largest twin-engine aircraft. It was a statement piece, and Qatar Airways wasted no time in securing a launch order. For Qatar's outspoken CEO, the 777X offered leverage, a way to remind Airbus that Boeing was still very much in the game. But there's a problem. The 777X has been stuck in limbo. Development issues, certification hurdles, and shifting market demand have pushed back its entry into service multiple times. What was once expected to arrive in 2020 has slipped into the second half of the decade, with no firm delivery date in sight. For Qatar, that creates an awkward paradox. The 777X represents the future, a bold promise of capacity and range that could reshape its global network. Yet it's still just that, a promise. The A350, on the other hand, is already flying, already moving passengers, already shaping Qatar's schedule. But it's also mired in disputes, questions of reliability, and a very public legal battle with Airbus. In many ways, Qatar Airways finds itself caught between two aircraft, one it has, but doesn't fully trust, and one it wants, but can't yet touch. At its core, this saga goes far beyond peeling paint or minor technical disputes. What we're really witnessing is a high-stakes power struggle over the future of long-haul aviation. Every new order, every delivery delay, and every performance benchmark carries weight, because they don't just represent airplanes, they represent influence, prestige, and billions of dollars in market share. On one side stands the A350, Airbus's sleek flagship of efficiency, already proving itself in service across the globe. On the other, the upcoming 777X, Boeing's answer to the A350, promising even greater capacity and those dramatic folding wingtips that symbolize its ambition. Caught in the middle is Qatar Airways. But rather than simply choosing sides, the airline has played both manufacturers like chess pieces, leveraging its orders to demand absolute perfection. By pushing Airbus on quality while keeping its massive 777X order alive with Boeing, Qatar has ensured it remains the center of gravity in this rivalry. Because at the end of the day, this isn't just Airbus versus Boeing. It's a reminder that in the Gulf, airlines like Qatar don't compromise. They expect the very best, because for them, aviation isn't just business, it's identity. After months of courtroom battles, fiery press conferences, and jets grounded in the desert sun, the standoff finally broke. In early 2023, Airbus and Qatar Airways reached a confidential settlement. It wasn't just paperwork, it was the moment when one of aviation's most bitter disputes finally cooled. Deliveries of the A350 resumed. One by one, the aircraft that had been sidelined slowly returned to the skies, their carbon fiber fuselages once again carrying passengers across continents. For Airbus, it meant salvaging the reputation of its flagship widebody. For Qatar, it meant regaining the fleet strength it needed to maintain its role as a global powerhouse. But beneath the surface, the scars of the battle remained. The trust between airline and manufacturer, once a carefully nurtured relationship, had been shaken to its core. Executives on both sides had crossed lines, aired grievances publicly, 
and turned what should have been a technical disagreement into a geopolitical spectacle. And the aviation world took note. Because this wasn't just about Qatar and Airbus. Every airline and every leasing company saw just how high the stakes can rise when contracts, reputation, and billions of dollars are on the table. And lurking in the background, Boeing's 777X program was quietly waiting, ready to seize on any weakness in its European rival's armor. The settlement may have ended the lawsuits, but it didn't erase the memory of the clash. Instead, it left a lingering reminder that in modern aviation, the relationships between airlines and manufacturers are as fragile as the composite materials that build their jets. So why did this happen? Because for Qatar Airways, the A350 wasn't just another aircraft in the fleet. It was the very heart of its long-haul ambitions. This jet was supposed to carry the airline's reputation across continents, linking Doha to the world with unmatched comfort, efficiency, and prestige. When cracks began to appear, literally, in the form of deteriorating surface paint, the issue went far beyond cosmetics. For Qatar, it felt like its entire brand promise was under threat. To the airline, passengers weren't just buying a seat, they were buying confidence in safety and quality. And even the slightest suggestion of doubt could ripple across markets, denting the airline's global standing. Fighting back wasn't just about technical standards, it was about image, trust, and the delicate balance of power between airlines and the manufacturers they depend on. The rivalry with Boeing's 777X only sharpened the edges. Suddenly, this wasn't just a question of engineering. It became a chess match played on a geopolitical stage, with governments, regulators, and industry leaders all watching closely. What began as a technical defect transformed into a full-blown standoff that symbolized something larger. How vulnerable even the most powerful airlines can be when their crown jewel is called into question. And it was that sense of vulnerability, the fear of losing an edge, that pushed Qatar Airways to fight tooth and nail, no matter the cost. In the end, this fight was never just about paint. It was about power, pride, and the future of long-haul flying. The A350 still leads the skies today, but the 777X is looming closer. And Qatar Airways? It's still playing both sides, making sure it always comes out on top. So what do you think? Did Qatar Airways take things too far, or was it justified in holding Airbus accountable? And could the 777X still tip the balance in this rivalry?